Now we will run the data power container using the docker run command. Before that, let's check the docker images we pulled from the docker hub repository. You can see there is no images there. So why there is no image? Because we uh, switched the container to the Windows container uh, because we have to create, uh, it has to create the config and uh, local folders in the Docker uh, uh, directory. So let's uh, switch it back to the Linux container. So switch, it, switch to Linux container. So in this container, we uh, downloaded or pulled the IBM com data power image. So once it's um, done, so let's check the Docker images now. So you can see now IBM com data power image is present in the Docker desktop or Docker host. So this one now and after this the image is there now we have to run the Docker run command to run the container. So before that, there should be some system requirements, the data power needs. So let's check that in the Docker settings. So you have to go to uh, this one, uh, advanced tab, and you can see the minimum CPU requirement is two. Uh, currently it's two, the by default it's coming as two. The memory it's showing as two GB, this by, by default it's showing two GB, but uh, data power requires uh, four GB RAM. So just change it to four GB. This is the 4 GB minimum requirement uh, for the data power to run in Windows. So that's apply to these changes. So these are the two major requirements uh, resource wise needed to data power to run. Just apply these changes. Data. So this Docker will restart now. Take some time to restart. So, meantime, I'll open the command what we need to run the data power. So, here, Docker run command we have using this hyphen it you can see this is the interactive mode we are opening so because we can work on the command line so or anything you want to send uh, the signals or commands to the docker we can do this with the cli command using the interactive mode so next is the uh, you can see this pwd present working directory the present working directory then configuration that we created uh, in earlier step config folder then it's mounting to the derouter config folder in the linux container so hyphen v again present working directory that is actually program data slash docker then there's a local folder mounting again to the derouter uh, folder so docker is starting so now uh, hyphen e then we have to accept the license for the data power to use data power accept license equal to true then hyphen e then data power high underscore interactive interactive mode so it becomes true so you have to give the port number whatever you want like hyphen p 9099 uh, colon 909 this way you have to give the port number then hyphen hyphen name and you can give any name to your container data power in windows now and you have to Give the image name that same name what you downloaded or pulled from the docker hub so i'll use this command now to run in the windows powershell so already the present working directory is set see program data slash docker so i'll just run this command
once it's done it lasts for the login the login so you can give admin and admin this is the default login available for that image data power image so login is admin password also admin okay now this is logged in so after this we have to enable the global configuration mode so to do that you have to use this point font so now global configuration mode is on the next step is we have to enable the web for this data power we can access through the web so for that we have to use web hyphen mgmt space zero then the port number we are used the 9099 so now it's a web management you can see now web management is successfully started after started starting this you can easily access the data power in your browser just open any browser so this is the protocol you are using HTTPS that you use then it's hosted in your local host port 9099 just hit enter so not secure it's giving because it's a SSL layer enabled for this so just click advanced and proceed to local host so it will open the data power login window so this is the data power gateway so you can enter the username and password the same username password admin and password also admin so here default domain so it creates automatically if you want any domains to be created you can create yourself the other domains like particular to some person or particular to some projects you can create a domain here and there are two interfaces available group lead console and web gui web gui you can get the a picture of graphical presentation just click this one you can change anytime once you logged in just i'm logging in now with the blueprint console Okay, now the data power console is open. You can see all the options you require, like in hardware appliance, when the console is open. Same way, you can see all the options available here multi protocol gateway, web service proxy, B2B gateway, XML firewall, anything you can use here. So, next, so you can use and work on this. So, B2B gateway, if you open anything like that so you can create here new so and so now you can if you want to switch it to web gui you can do that here web gui you can see here you can see the graphical representation of the services You can see now control panel b2b services services monitoring and troubleshooting files this is segregated and properly you can see here everything so you can add wizard go to the control panel again Okay, this way we can uh, set up the data power 
in Windows using Docker.